high linear algebra student. Uh, this is the last exercise in the section 1.9 where we are talking about the matrix of a linear transformation. And this is it. It's a uh, consider a transformation from R3 to R3 given by this formula. We would like to know if it's a non two transformation and if it is a one to one transformation. Okay. So you should certainly attempt it by yourself. It's an easy problem as long as you understand like the basics, like what is one to one, what is on two, uh, what is the standard matrix of a transformation, how to get it. Okay. Uh, so it should be a nice, let's say, review problem. Okay, but let's do it. Uh, I will just uh, tell you our line of attack, which will be your line of attack most of the times you're faced with a problem like this. It is to find the standard matrix of the transformation. Like, notice that it's not asked, right? But implicitly, you should find the standard matrix of the transformation. Because if you can find that matrix, then the problem boils to using the pivot theorem for that uh, for linear transformation, right? On that standard matrix. All right, so here we go. This will be step number one. So find uh, the standard matrix. Okay, and what's nice when we have a formula is that we can simply replace E1, E2, and E3 in it, right? So for example, T of E1, I'm actually going to write it like this, T of E1, okay? Or, oh yeah, better idea. I'll just color code E1 uh, on its own. Okay, so uh, you have the linear transformation, as you can see, outputs a linear combination of these three vectors with the weights given by the input vector, okay? So let's first try these three um, vectors like this. Now, you know that E1 has X component one, y and z component zero, okay? So this is your linear combination. And as a result, the vector is gonna be uh, the one of, uh, the one that takes the weight of x. So negative three, one, two. Obviously, you're doing the same exact thing for t of e2 and t of e3. So I'm gonna write all the blue first. Okay, so I'm basically I'm doing the canvas for all three calculations. All right. So T of E2. Okay, remember that E2 has an X component and a Z component of zero and a Y component of one. So it basically picks, picks up the second uh, vector, the one that has the, the Y component attached to it, the, the Y weight, okay? So it gives you the vector negative zero, uh, negative one, zero, one. And finally, T of E3, as you can see, So it has an X component of zero, a Y component of zero, and a Z component of one, and therefore picks up the vector having the weight of Z. So uh, the vector negative two, two, zero, okay? And as such, the standard matrix, uh, and I'm gonna write it at the bottom actually, the standard matrix of the transformation is given by these three columns. So negative three, one, two. Okay, then you have negative one, zero, one. 
And finally, negative 2, 2, 0. Okay, I'm going to put this in a box and erase all the rest. But before I do that, I just want to mention something. As you become more and more comfortable with linear transformation, you will be able to do these calculations very fast. For example, look, you have this. You know what E1, E2, and E3 are. So you know that in, with E1, you're going to replace 1, 0, 0. E2, 0, 1, 0. You see? So you already see that the standard matrix will just be these three columns right beside each other. Okay? And that's, that's the result we get, of course. The only thing is do not learn shortcuts as long as you don't understand why this shortcut is working out, right? And be ready to fall into these calculations if you're not quite sure exactly of how the standard matrix looks like, okay? That being said, let's erase everything else and answer these two questions. As I told you in the introduction, what we're going to do is we're going to use the pivot theorem. So use pivot theorem. So what this means is that we're going to take this matrix and row reduce it. We have negative 3, 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and then 2, uh, negative 2, 2, 0. Okay. Now, what's nice about the pivot theorem is that we don't need the reduced row echelon form. The row echelon form is actually enough, okay? Uh, let's begin by choosing what will be our pivot, and I think this one is the best choice. So we're going to put it at the top. Row, uh, row 2 will be interchanged with row 1. So we have 1, 0, 2. And then negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, 2, 1, 0. Okay, now our pivot is at the top. We're, we're happy about that, obviously. And now we're going to eliminate uh, everything that's underneath. So uh, row 2 will become row 2 plus 3, row 1. And row 3 will become row 3 minus 2, row 1. So that's it, we have this, then 0, negative 1, and then uh, negative 2 plus 6, so that's 4, and then we have here 0, 1 minus 2 row 1, so that's 1, and finally this minus 4, okay. After that, so, okay, so we have our pivot right here. And we want to select our second pivot. So we could, we could take either one, right? One or negative one, uh, we're okay with, with uh, either, uh, either, either entry. So let's pick the one that is already at row number two because it, it eases our work. And perform row three becomes row three plus row two. So... We're going to have 1, 0, 2, and then 0, negative 1, negative 1, 4. And finally, 0, 0, and negative 4 plus 4 gives us 0. And that right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the row echelon form, right? You have your pivots here and here. You have zeros underneath. Perfect. Now let's answer uh, is T on 2 and is T 1 to 1. So remember that T is on 2 if A has a pivot in every row.
So as a consequence, because the third row doesn't have any pivot, as you can see, right, it's a row of zero, uh, T is not on two. So T is not on two since the third row doesn't have a pivot. Okay, uh, now let's answer the other question, right? So is it one-to-one? -one? Remember that it's gonna be one-to-one -one if it has a pivot in every column. So T is one-to-one -one if A has a pivot. in every column i'm going to erase this i'm going to erase the matrix here it's getting in the way so you look at the column and you notice that this column right here doesn't have a pivot right so you conclude that t is not one to one One, and again, since the third column doesn't have a pivot. So this is it. Basically, uh, one to one and on two questions like this are quite simple most of the times because it boils down to finding the standard matrix and using the pivot theorem as as i just did okay um and you'll be able to do this every time the linear transformation is from rn to rn right we're going to see examples of linear transformation that are not like that for which we cannot find the standard matrix but these are way later okay these are in chapter four all right so hopefully this video was helpful see you in the next video